This is Shivariti. Welcome to the session on deadlock in Java. In this session, we are going to look at what is meant by deadlock, how it happens while we are working with the Java multi-threading, and how to prevent uh, deadlocks in uh, Java multi-threading programming. First, let us see what is meant by deadlock. Deadlock is in a situation where uh, thread 1 is uh, uh, waiting for a lock which is already acquired by the thread 2, and thread 2 is uh, waiting for uh, to take a lock on the object which is already acquired by the thread 1. So now both the threads are waiting for each other to raise the lock. This situation is called a deadlock. That means deadlock is, is, is a situation where multiple threads are trying to waiting for uh, waiting for each other to complete their operations is known as a deadlock. This is a common uh, scenario when we are working with the Java multi um, programming because if we uh, don't handle the synchronized uh, blocks properly on the resources, then it is going to lead to the deadlock situation. That means when multiple threads are trying to access on the shared resources and if you are not releasing the resources properly in the sequence how they have acquired the logs, then multiple threads are trying to um, waiting for each other to complete their the operations hence those operations is never going to be uh, success because of that one the deadlock situation occurs so make sure that whenever we are working with the uh, java multi-threading we need to take the proper um, care uh, handling about the shared resources uh, on the uh, while working with the uh, Java multi-threading. I am going to explain how uh, the deadlock situation occurs through the programmatically. So let us see here. In the main method, I have called as a uh, dead, uh, deadlock demo. In this, I have the shared resources. Now this is the shared resource class where I have two uh, two resources that is string resource uh, one equal to initially I am initializing to null and string um, resource two equal to null. These are the two are the member variables and I have one constructor which is going to take these resources as a parameters and uh, it is going to initialize the whatever the values we are going to set to this constructor. So this is the shared resources. These are the resources which are shared between the multiple threads. Okay. So now the shared is done. Now I have created a two threads which are going to uh, manipulate, uh, which are going to uh, uses the shared resources object. Now if you see my thread class one, this is a uh, this is going to implement the runnable interface where we have a member variable as a shared resources. Shared resource is the one this thread is going to use is, and uh, this is going to be initialized to be using the constructor. So whatever the shared resources we have created, that is going to be take as a parameter for this my thread class one. Okay, in this thread class, I have override the run method with the logic. I implemented a synchronized block, which first what it is going to do is it is going to acquire the lock on the share resource dot resource one, and then inside this once this operation once inside this block, again I am taking acquiring the lock on uh, I am having the one more synchronized block, which is going to acquire the lock on the share resource two. That means resource two it is going to acquire the lock. First, it will acquire the lock on the resource one, and then I have one more synchronized block where it is going to acquire the lock on the resource two. This is the my my thread class one. Now I have one more class which is going to again implementing the runnable interface, which is also using the shared resources object, and it has a constructor which is going to take the same shared resources object as a input uh, for the constructor pa parameter is constructor and I am again overriding the run method here first what I am going to do is first we are going to uh, synchronize block acquires the lock on the resource 2 and then acquiring the lock on the resource 1 in the first thread what the order is first it will be as it is a synchronized block what happens is when thread started first it will come to this block and it will acquire the lock on the resource one and it will wait for the one second 
and then it will try to uh, take the lock on the resource 2. In the case of thread 2, first it will acquire the lock on the resource 2 and then it is going to be wa uh, waiting for waiting to acquire the lock on the resource 1. This is the sequence we have maintained. Now let us run this program and see the output. Before we see the output, we this is the thread implementation. I have I created a thread objects for these two um, classes, whatever the my thread class one and class two, and then I start uh, started the thread. Now I am going to run this program and see what happens. Now this is going to lead to the deadlock situation. If you see here, first thread one started, it acquired the lock on the resource one, and then Thread two, thread 2 also started, it has acquired the lock on the resource 2. Now what happens is, both are waiting for each other. Now in order to complete the thread 1, the thread 1 should release the lock and at the same time, in order to complete the thread 0, thread 1 should has to release the lock. Now what happened is, same problem happened. Thread 1 is waiting for any lock which is already acquired by the lock uh, thread 2. And thread 2 is waiting for the object lock which is already acquired by the thread 1. Now both threads are waiting for each other. That is the reason the deadlock situation happens. Now deadlock situation is going to be like it is never going to be ended until we stop the thread or we are going to shut down. Uh, in this case we stop the program. So this is the common scenario will happen when we are working with the Java multi-threading. So we need to make sure that while acquiring the lock or the while implementing implementing the synchronized blocks on the resources, we should be very cautious about the process. Otherwise, it is going to lead this type of situation is called as in deadlock. Now, how to eliminate it? Now, in order to eliminate the process, what you can do is the thread one is how it has acquired the lock. Resource, first it has acquired the lock on the resource 1 and then it is waiting for the lock on the resource 2. Similarly, what you can do is see the same sequence you can follow here also. So first you can acquire the lock on the resource 1 and then you can acquire the lock on the resource 2. In the same sequence how you earlier followed, then this situation can be eliminated. The dead leg situation can be eliminated. Now I am running this program once again and if you see the output of the program, first acquire the lock on, okay, I am going to explain this way, let me, let me see here. First what happened is, first thread 1, thread 0 started, acquired the lock on the resource 1 and then waiting for, no, waiting to acquire the lock on the resource 2 by thread 0. And what happened is acquired the lock on the resource 2 and then acquired the lock on the resource 1 by thread 1 and then waiting for to acquire the lock on the thread 0. Now it has completed successfully. So in order to eliminate the deadlock situation, we need to make sure that acquiring the resources on the same way, uh, the same sequence, you, we need to release the also. We should not um, we should not reverse the change of the uh, uh, locking on the resources. Then what happens is the deadlock situation can occur. So once again, I will iterate in this program. What it is a simple uh, program where we have a shared resources. In this shared resources, we have a shared resource one and shared resource two, and these are this is the uh, resources which are used by the two threads. One thread is trying to acquire the lock on the resource uh, uh, resource resource one, and uh, then inside that we are trying to acquire the lock on the resource two. In the second thread, what we are doing is in order to uh, replicate the scenario, thre second thread is going to take the resource uh, lock on the uh, resource uh, two first, and then it is waiting for the to acquire the lock on the resource one which actually causes the deadlock situation. In order to eliminate the deadlock situation, we always specify the same sequence of uh, uh, to acquire the locks as well as then the release the lock, then this can be eliminated. Okay, hope you are clear with the deadlock concept and if you have any questions, please comment on my YouTube video and please do subscribe to my channel to get more technical videos from my end.